Erev Tov, Chavrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live, and we've got some very interesting stories going on tonight. We're seeing now uh, a report coming out of Yemen. According to uh, the Twitter here on the Yemeni Observer, they're saying that the Yemeni Yemenis uh, have air defenses have knocked down two F-16s over Yemen. Uh, I believe these are Qatari and uh, F-16s that they're speaking about here. You can see the image here that they have shared, a second image here uh, that has came out. Uh, this was actually on the 26th, I believe that was yesterday, I think today is 27th of, uh, of March here. Uh, but anyway, very interesting to see this happening. It says here, Yemeni Army Defense Forces hit two UAE, United Arab Emirates, F-16s, correction there, not Qatarian, but United Arab Emirates, F-16s, knocking them out of the skies there. I'm sure that the Saudis are going to join in with the United Arab Emirates with a pretty heavy response for that. Uh, it's just, it's a disaster in Yemen to begin with, a humanitarian disaster. Uh, what's going on for the people that are living there. The conditions are just appalling, and the Saudis are showing no signs, nor the United Arab Emirates, uh, of stopping this war against the Yemenis people there. Uh, also, we have Sputnik News reporting World War III is now closer than in any time since the Cuban Missile Crisis. As an analyst there, says the UK... Uh, recent diplomatic row is by no means an isolated case. Geopolitical analyst Phil Butler told Sputnik, referring to the mounting pressure exerted by the West on Russia over the past years, judging by the level of the West saber rattling a Third World War is now closer than at any time since 1962 Car uh, Caribbean crisis, Butler uh, opinioned on this. Uh, very, very tense situation, and of course, Theresa May really seemingly to me to go overboard. There has not been conclusive proof that Russia actually, actually uh, caused this Scripple case here, uh, the poisoning of the Scripple family, uh, and of course, Theresa May making it look like it was as either Russia did it directly or they let it get out of their control. Well, if you're going to say they got out of their control, the way it got out of Russia's control was the collapse of the Soviet Union. Well, in that case, you could blame Pope John Paul II and Ronald Reagan for that. Uh, of course, they collapsed the Soviet Union without firing a shot. It wasn't hard when you have a Jesuit-controlled government to collapse uh, the Soviet Union to begin with, but most people never look at that. No ways. Uh, but nonetheless, a lot of things are going on. And, you know, my wife and I, we were just talking about it just before coming on. You know, Russia, though, there may be someone playing in behind the scenes with Russia here for a, a war coming up because I can't imagine how all the forces just build up, whether it be in Syria, on the border of Russia, Russia's forces building up or whatever, and, and then someone not retaliating before you could even get built up. I mean, like right now, we, we broke this story the other day, thanks to Lorenzo on Already Happened, about uh, uh, the, the United States unloading uh, tanks and other types of weapon in uh, Jordan at the Aquaba port there. And now, here it is, what, two days later, and it's popping up everywhere. Tyler Jordan here with uh, Zero Hedge is one of many of them saying, now war preparations... Leaked images allegedly show U.S. military tanks arriving in Jordan. What always takes the mainstream media a couple of days to catch up with the things that uh, alternative media brings out? I always find that re very interesting. Anyway, though, the Syrian government forces have now secured most of the eastern good of enclave, as Tyler points out, the last remaining rebel-held area near Damascus, the capital and the largest city of the Syrian Arab Republic. But of course, now that they're pushing towards Dada, that's the Syrian Arab army there, and they've been wiping out these different jihadist groups there. Doesn't look like the U.S. is going to just sit idly by. And of course, you know, a war being on <laughs> at a near, uh, almost a near possibility of a World War III can certainly be seen by the latest actions with China in this uh, petrodollar being dropped in favor of the yuan. 
Of course, RT reported this death of the U.S. dollar. China launches Petro One to challenge greenbacks dominance, and it was a very successful day. Oil trading as high as $72 a barrel as far as what it'd be in dollars there. The Chinese won very strong in this regard here. Russia and China both ditching the U.S. dollar. That gets Russia a lot more money for their oil as well. And... Uh, you know, friends, I've been watching China, watching them grow, watching them build their military, watching aircraft after carrier after aircraft carrier being either launched or being built by China now. And with the Chinese yuan becoming a reserve currency as well, I have really have been believing that this is going to be the next superpower. And I know that we say the U.S. is a superpower, Russia is a superpower, but if Rome gets its way and pits these two superpowers against each other and they are weakened through uh, a major escalation of violence, even bringing down possibly the UK as well in a nuclear war or a limited nuclear exchange, China will be the only nuclear or major world power left. Other than that of Erdogan, who would be kind of a little sub-country, uh, maybe the strongest, um, strongest country as far as in the Middle East. We'll just have to wait to see all that happens there. Very troubling, though. Um, also, we have uh, coming out that Prime Minister Netanyahu, the Jerusalem Post, is reporting that he is in the hospital. He's been hospitalized with uh, fever and cough from the flu. I actually sent a message to uh, uh, MK member Yehuda Glick, and uh, if anybody can get a message to Prime Minister Netanyahu, you know, 75 grams of vitamin C. Uh, this pretty high dosage there kind of make you feel a little shaky when you're getting it there. But if he were to do that intravenously for about three days, uh, he, in fact, after the first day, he would already be able to return to the office, wouldn't have to be sitting in a hospital any longer. It works that rapidly, that rapidly. Uh, be something that could help him out there. Uh, I don't have it up on the screen right now, but let me just run over to RT real quick. Very troubling situation. We picked it up last night as we were... Uh, headed into bed there, and um, or the night before last, I should say. Very sad, sad situation that happened in Kemerovo, uh, Russia. The mall fire there that claimed the lives, I believe, of 69 people with still six people missing at the time. Many children were killed in this fire. Very, very sad, very sad situation. Um, it was very troubling to see that. A lot of people jumping out of the mall. Some of them, I don't know, I think one man survived the fall uh, when he jumped. But many children perished in this fire, tweeting and texting their parents. Parents coming to the mall, trying to break in, trying to rescue their children, and were just unable to do so. Uh, very, very tragic day for, for the Russian people. And so our hearts and prayers go out to the Russian people for this loss here. Uh, might also, uh, if I can bring it up real quick again on Twitter here, I'd actually retweeted this. I, I think I retweeted it. Let me just look real quick. By the way, if you haven't followed us on Twitter, Israeli News Live at Stephen Dinoon. I use the name that I write books under, Dinoon. Uh, uh, check out our Twitter page there. Follow us there. We do a lot of retweets. Doesn't mean that we support uh, the people that we retweet on, on a frequent basis there. Uh, but just as we see things that are going on, we're always retweeting things we see. This is what I wanted to share with you here. Very, very uh, amazing situation. Speaking of fires that happened in Russia there, this little girl, young girl, jumps from an apartment balcony in Beersheba, Israel, into the arms of several people below to escape a fire raging in the building. Uh, ABC News was posting this. You can see the little girl here. Let me see if I can kind of blow this up. And they're telling her to jump. She's got to go down about two stories down in the jump there. They're waiting to catch her. And suddenly the little girl does jump and they catch her. And what a blessing. Or the little girl would have passed away as well had she not been caught by this family here. So it's so nice to see good news sometimes when everything else is always going bad. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Very troubling situations happening around the world. Uh, please support the broadcast, the work we're doing here. 
We do need your help in keeping this uh, ministry and broadcast alive there. Uh, we are planning on definitely launching the uh, magazine that we've been speaking about. Many people have written us about this. Uh, there are We have several other authors that would be looking to contribute uh, writing articles on a monthly basis there. And we're looking at about five months from now on production of the first issue. We will let you know, though, more details uh, as we can. Once we get back to the United States, we, we return to the United States at the end of next month. Uh, we'll be working on trying to get more details about what it'll take to do all of this and try to update you as we get that information. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live.